Hi guys, and welcome back. I hope that you had a really good holiday season and were able to spend it with people you care about and not drink too much. But now it's time to get back to work. And in the spirit of life feeling like some kind of crazy joke recently, I decided to start the year off with an Excel prank. And this one is a great little one. So here we have the data from the Elegant Date Analysis Tutorial. And we're navigating around, selecting cells, looking at kitchens and bathrooms and different records. And randomly, the spreadsheet will zoom. But why did it zoom? I don't know. So if I click another cell, oh, now it's back. And then you're navigating around, zoomed again, what happened? Go to another cell, and it's back. <laughs> so the prank is that it will randomly zoom in or out the spreadsheet. And then when you select another cell, it will zoom back to its normal level. Now I have this zoom trigger to set when you select different cells but you could use the base code that I have here and make it so it will automatically zoom and unzoom or not unzoom the spreadsheet for really almost any given action. So maybe you want it on a timer, maybe you want it to happen when the workbook opens or closes, and in a moment I'm going to show you how all of this works. But before that I want to be very clear, it doesn't delete or erase or harm any data. The only thing that is changed in this prank is the zoom level. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now let me show you how this works. And this is the point in the tutorial where if you don't want to learn how the VBA code works, you can just download the file and copy and paste the code, which I'll show you how to do before I get into it. So here is our spreadsheet and just hit Alt F11 to go to the VBA window and that's where all of the programming code is located. And what you want to do is to double click Sheet 2 or Final and copy all of this code. And then just open up your file, hit Alt F11 to get here, and double click the worksheet where you want the code to run. So this code is worksheet specific. If I go to another worksheet, it is not going to run over here, only on the final worksheet. Now, of course, you can change that and make it work for the entire workbook, but I decided to not want to drive the coworkers too crazy with this code and have it only on one worksheet. And if you don't see this window when you're here, by the way, just go to View and Project Explorer or Control R. Now, if you want to learn how this works, stick around, and I'm going to go through this code line by line to explain it. I'm not going to program it out. Nothing's going to be written, but I will go over everything and explain how it works. So let us make this a little smaller and go through the code. This is the code. It looks like a lot, but that's because I have a lot of comments in it. I'm in course building mode as I'm still working on the VBA course. And I have a mantra there, which is that no naked lines of code are allowed. And so here I've added quite a lot of comments to explain how everything works. Let us start at the top, sheet zooming prank. This is in the worksheet selection change event. That means that it's going to run every single time a cell is selected within this worksheet. And you have lots of events up here. So if you double click the worksheet from over here and you choose worksheet from the left menu, then you go over here, you have lots of events and you can do a lot of really cool things here. But the point is that this code, all of it runs every single time a cell is selected. So if you are going to change it for your needs, Anything that you put up here, it's going to run every time. So just take note of that. And I'll cover all these variables in just a moment, but I want to explain the idea of how this works first. So I'm going to generate a random number, and then I'm going to set a random number threshold. And every time this runs, I'm going to check if the random number was greater than the threshold. And if it was, then I'm going to reset the spreadsheet and save the previous zoom level. Then, when this macro runs again, I'm going to reset it back to the previous zoom level. And down here is the little if statement that's going to control all of that. So let's talk about the things that we have to do to set it up. First up, we have some variables here. Here are static variables. These are really cool variables that live beyond the life of this code. So we can store a value here to track if it was zoomed or not. And the next time this macro runs, we can check that variable to see if it had been previously zoomed. So when we make that crazy zoom to sort of mess up the view of the spreadsheet, we save a value in here that says it has been zoomed. And at the same time, we save the previous zoom setting value into this variable. 
So both of these variables are going to live beyond the execution of this macro so that we can use them next time. And this is a Boolean type, which means it can be either true or false, on or off. So it is used as the switch. This zoom last is long. It just means it can be a very, very long number, but it is not a decimal. Now let's go to the next two sections, random number variables and the zoom variables. Here we have a variable to hold the random number that we're going to generate. That's stored as double, which just means a number that has a decimal. Then we store the threshold as well as a double. Down here, it's just the maximum possible zoom that we want to allow for, the minimum possible zoom, and the new zoom that we're going to have. And first up, we store the max zoom and min zoom. And you want to have these values here, because if you set the zoom greater than 400% or less than 10%, it's going to cause an error. So you at least want to bound it by that. But maybe you want to change it and make the maximum zoom 150 and minimum zoom something like 95. So you could narrow the bounds. And the interesting thing if you narrow the bounds like this is that the user might not exactly understand what's going on. So let's say that you set it to 95 and 105. So it just changes the zoom a little bit. This is something that is actually maybe a little bit more evil than the wide zoom variations because it could make the person think they're going a little bit crazy after a while. But it's up to you how you do that. Just don't torture your coworkers too much. So I've got min at 10 and max at 400. And now down here, we have to generate the actual zoom level within these bounds. And you could do this in VBA, but that requires a little bit of math. And though it's not actually that difficult, why make your life more difficult than you have to if you can just use a worksheet function for it? And this is a great thing you can do in VBA for Excel. We can use worksheet functions directly in the macros. And in my full VBA course, I cover this a lot more because there's actually quite a few interesting things you can do with this. But here we have the basic version that works really well in this case. So you just type application dot worksheet function and then the name of the function you'd like to access. And it's going to give you a big list. So if you go application dot worksheet function period, you get a big list of all the functions that you can use. So it's not that difficult to remember the name or spell it correctly. And then we use rand between, put the zoom min and the zoom max, and it's going to give us a number between them. Now that we have the new zoom level, let's go ahead and get a random number. Now we don't need to store the random number and the random number threshold in variables, and I didn't have to do it with these either, but it adds a little bit more structure to the macro, and it makes it easier to make changes later and understand what's going on, and to add notes here. Now for the rand, we have a function rnd it's going to generate a random number between 0 and 1. So we get a decimal. Just store that here. And that's why that is a double up here. So it can hold the decimal. And for the zoom threshold, we use that to compare with the random number. So we're going to say, hey, is the random decimal number greater than the zoom threshold number? If it is, then we can continue here. If it is not, we will not. And rand is supposed to give a random number. And for the purpose of this macro, it pretty much does. So if you set the threshold to 0.5, in theory, 50% of the time, it'll be less than the random number and 50% greater than the random number. So the lower that you set this, the more often it's going to zoom the person's spreadsheet. So if you set it to 0.1, it's going to zoom it in or out a lot. If we set it to 0.9, it's not going to happen that often. So here you control how crazy you want to make your coworkers. 0.75 seems like a nice one. And now we get to the point where we check if we're going to zoom the spreadsheet or reset it or do nothing. And first up, we check the switch variable is zoomed. Remember, it can be true or false. And Boolean variables, true false variables, after you set them, they are false by default. So the first time that we run this guy, it will already be false. We're going to get to here. And it will say, if is zoomed, then, and it's going to be false, so we will not run this. We will now get to this point right here. And here we compare the random number with a threshold. If it's not bigger than the threshold, we go down here and have no more code to run. If it is bigger than the threshold, we get here. We get the current zoom level, active window.zoom, and then we store that in the zoom last variable. 
And remember that is static, so the value here will remain the next time this macro runs, and that way we know what value to use to reset it. And then after we've stored the value, we can go and set the zoom. So we access active window.zoom. We set it to the new zoom, which we got up here or right here using the rand between function. And then we set the switch variable is zoomed to true. That way, the next time this code runs, we go through all of this, we get to here, and is zoomed is now true. Since it is true, we run this code, and we are going to set the active zoom to what it was previously, and then we set the switch variable equal to false. That way, the next time this code runs, this section will not run, and we will get back to this check right here. And that is how this code works, and that is all there is to it. It is a relatively simple macro, but it incorporates a lot of different things, right? Worksheet function, using the RAND function, if statements, Boolean variables, their default value, resetting them, having them set to static up here. And so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here, but it's not too difficult. So you can use this as a fun way to practice your skills in VBA. A lot more fun than just looping through cells over and over again. So I encourage you to download this file, get this code, and play around with it. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.